All right, another way to organize data is to graph it, right? We see graphs all the time. So let's talk about some common graphs in this chapter. Um, so let's start with graphing numerical data first. Um, we can create these things called histograms. It sounds scary, but you've probably seen a histogram before. It's actually just a bar graph with a fancy name. So a frequency histogram is a bar graph that illustrates frequencies. And then other times we like relative frequency and it's also a bar graph that'll just have relative frequency instead. So we'll see both of those below. Um, so sometimes we like frequency because it tells us how many people, um, but sometimes how many people is confusing. It depends if it's like a big group of people or a small group of people. Um, so that's why sometimes we like relative frequency better because it tells us like a percentage in a way. Um, so let's look at the frequency and relative frequency of 35 people with type 2 diabetes. Um, so the variable, um, we're going to look at the ages. So that's what's going to vary. And it looks like I made age discrete. We had the conversation where age can kind of is kind of continuous, right? Because you're you are continuously aging, um, but we normally define age as like a whole number. So we're going to organize it as discrete in this example. So someone who's nine and a half, we're just calling them nine, right? Someone who's a day under ten, we're just calling them nine in this example. So we do zero through nine, ten through nineteen and so on. So those are our ages. Um, so frequency tells us how many people, but again, um, is, is one significant? I don't know. So we like relative frequency. So 0 0.02 tells me about 2.86%. So it's not very common in zero to nine, but if you jump to 40 through 49, right, it's 20%, right? I'm just going one, two for all of these. And that tells me that, um, Type 2 diabetes is maybe a little bit more common in this age group. So let's go ahead and turn these into histograms. Um, you may notice relative frequency isn't quite one, but it's at least close to one. Um, right, it's a little bit under one and that's probably just to do with rounding. So let's see what histograms look like. So I'm just gonna jump into an example and that's how I'll teach you how it works. So what we're gonna do is we're always gonna put the variable on the bottom. So in this case, our variable is age. We're going to count by the left endpoints. That's going to make our histogram look really nice. So I'm going to count by tens. So 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. And I'll go maybe to 90. It's usually nice to go to the next group. Um, but count by the left endpoints. Um, nine will pop up. We'll worry about that in a second, but don't go to nine. Jump to 10. I'll explain it as we get into the graph. Vertical will always be frequency or relative frequency. So in this example, it'll be frequency. And we'll start at zero. And then we only really need to go up to seven. So I think I can just go by ones. And I'll talk about how to do more challenging scales later. And then we just make bars. So I'll make it in color just to make it look a little nicer. Um, but for zero through nine, even though it's only zero through nine, we still go to 10. So that bar is just interpreted as zero through under 10, and that's okay. The next bar, 10 through 19, is also one. We're still gonna go to 20, because we, we're gonna try to make this nice and continuous. And that's okay. Um, so 20 through 29, we're going to go up to 2. We're going to touch 30, but it is interpreted that 30 is not part of that. Um, 30 through 40, or 30 through 39 has 2. We draw it through 40, we just read it as through 39. And then 40 through 49, we're going to go all the way up to 7, up, touch the 50. Um, the next one, 50 through 59, we're only going to go up to 6, so we're just drawing bars. And then 60 through 69, back up to seven, back down to six, and then the final one will be three. 
And then you don't have to shade it in, but it is a little hard to see, so I'm just gonna shade it in to make it look a little nicer. And that's a histogram. The bars should be touching. And I've shaded it too much. You get it. And this is again a nice way to look at data. Um, sometimes graphs are easier than looking at lists of data. Um, so let me know if you have questions. Uh, let's do one more on the relative frequency and then we can kind of address some of the logistics. Um, when we do relative frequency, the bottom doesn't change. So it's still age. That's still my variable. But now our vertical will be relative frequency. And so this is where things get a little tricky. I can't count by ones anymore because relative frequency is like weird numbers. So we're going to find this thing called a scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find the largest number in relative frequency. So I'm going to look at this column and the largest one would be 0 0.20. We call it a max or the largest. Right, that's the biggest number. And then we're gonna divide it by like how much space we have. So if you're on binder paper, I would say usually divide by 10 or so. Um, since we have graph paper, space is how many boxes that we have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes. So I usually do around like 10 boxes if I'm on binder paper and have the freedom. So. Let's see, we get 0 0.025. We could count by this number. Um, if we wanna make life a little easier, we could round up to maybe 0 0.03 so that it's like a single digit. So we'll just count by 0 0.03. It seems weird, but it's really just counting by threes. So three, six, nine, just in decimal form, 0 0.03, 0 0.06, 0 0.09. And then just keep adding 0.03. Right, we're just counting by threes. They're just in a decimal place. 0 0.21, 0 0.24. And then if your largest number doesn't fit, that means your scale was maybe too big or too, your scale was wrong. It's probably too small. But these are gonna be a little trickier to graph. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this and bring it down so we can use it. Let's just squeeze that in. Let's just squeeze it in right there so we can reference it. I'll get rid of it in a second. So now we have to kind of estimate. So 0 0.02 is slightly under 0 0.03. So just estimate. So this the first two will be the same. We're estimating it's okay that the numbers don't show up. So we've got those. 0 0.05 will be slightly under 0 0.06. 0 0.05 slightly under 0 0.06, right? We're estimating the bars are touching. I'm doing that on purpose. 0 0.20 should be up near 0.21, but again, under. It's not perfect. 0 0.17 will be slightly under 18. And then these two will match those. Those are the same numbers. And then our final one is 0.08, so that'll be a little bit under 0.09. And that's our histogram. If you feel like shading it in, it looks a little nicer, but it doesn't have to be shaded. All right, if you need a little bit more time to draw, go ahead and pause the video before we keep going. Uh, make sure there are no gaps. And so you might notice some things about these graphs. They look really, really, really similar, and they should. So they look pretty much the same. 
Um, so let's do a few notes and then we'll pause, stop the video. So for continuous and discrete data sets, basically anytime we have either any type of numerical data, the bars go from lower to lower. So what the heck do I mean by that? Um, we went from zero to 10 and we basically kind of ignore this side and that's okay, right? We went from 10 to 20. Basically we ignore the right endpoints. They're just kind of hidden in there and that's fine. Um, it creates no gaps. It just makes, it makes the graph flow nicely. If there were gaps, I think the graph wouldn't flow and it'd be really hard to find patterns. And the way we take care of that is we just read the first one as zero through nine and then we just read the second one as 10 through 19. That's okay. But in terms of the graph, it looks nicer not to have those numbers there. And then we probably notice that these graphs essentially look the same. So relative frequency and relative frequency histograms look the same. The only difference is the vertical scale. So the numbers on the vertical scale are different. Otherwise it's the same. And that's a histogram.